Playing video games has got to be one of the most diverse hobbies I can think of. With so many genres and types, so many stories and adventures, they're almost like dreams. Coolest thing about these dreams though, is you have control. And you can go back and relive these dreams at any time. But some dreams are forgotten, lost to all the new ones that tell their tales. Me, I consider myself a game collector. Not in the traditional, I have every physical copy of every game I've ever bought, but I've come to find that even with an extensive library, I still go back all the time and replay my old games, even the ones that never made it onto my preferred gaming platform. Wait a second, Barry, how's that even possible? Well, it's quite simple. A little thing called emulation. See, an emulator is typically a program that can be downloaded that utilizes your hardware to trick a certain software into thinking it's being played through the initial console it came from. Oh, I see. You're pirating games then. Well, actually, it's not piracy. Most of the time. Barry, come on. How's this legal? How are emulators even allowed to exist? Well, let me explain. To emulate means to match or surpass, typically by imitation, and an emulator does just that. See, an emulator is nothing more than a program used to decrypt specific files like ISOs and ROMs. However, the program does not come with these ROMs installed, so the emulator itself is essentially a dead program. Since the emulator itself cannot actually do anything illegal, like play any video game you ever wanted to from the moment you download it, then there is nothing illegal about downloading it. Some emulators actually make you download BIOS updates and patches in order to even allow the games to be played in the first place, just to ensure its legality. Now, I know that seems sketchy, but this is done because some companies today are heavily stuck in the past and don't want anyone playing their games regardless as to how long they've been out, even if the game doesn't make money anymore, which to me is ridiculous. After you have an emulator, you can burn an ISO from a disk that you own or download one from the internet. Now, this is where we start to get into a gray area, and there is no right or wrong here. See, if I went to download a game that Nintendo no longer sold, morally, I think it's okay to download that game. If they do have a copy for sale that is easy to access, then I feel better buying a copy and playing it on my preferred platform. As a consumer, I think that should be my choice from the get-go. If I already own the game and want to download it or burn it, then I feel I'm justified. I made that purchase, so again, my game. The only time I consider emulation and piracy even remotely similar is if you download an emulator for a console that's still alive and download games for it and play through them without buying them. Granted, there aren't a ton of emulators around that are capable of letting you do this, but a few do exist and this is something that I would consider stealing. Again, all I do is purchase the game and play it on my PC instead. Simple. And it's your choice. Now that I've talked about emulation, let's discuss how to go about doing it. I get asked a lot if I can make emulation tutorials, so I'll try to cover as much of it as possible so that it's easy when you go to do it. If you go to a website called The Emulator Zone, you'll find that it has almost every emulator thus far. Clicking on the system you want will bring you to a page that holds a link to download the emulator. If there are more than one emulators for that console, there are user reviews as well as 5 star rating systems to try and show you which one is better at the moment. Now, with the Dolphin emulator, which is my favorite emulator, all you have to do is download the program itself. Whereas for some of the other emulators, like the PlayStation 1 and 2 emulator, PCSX 1 and 2, you actually need to hunt down the BIOS, which unfortunately is not always on this site, but is easily found online with a simple Google search. Don't get too bummed though, because a lot of the emulators that do need you to download the BIOS in order for them to work, they are on this site. Okay, so you've got the emulator. Some of them are really easy to set up, and others have really complicated interfaces. For example, Dolphin has everything you need at the top bar. Config, which houses a lot of the emulator's base settings. Graphics, which allows you to adjust the visuals in your emulated games, including frame rate and resolutions. And controllers, so you can play with a keyboard and mouse, or any controller you want to. God, I love emulation. However, not all emulators are this simple. PCSX2 has a wonky looking interface that also houses all of its settings in the top bar of the screen, but is far less friendly. The thing about messing with these settings is that some computer builds play the games better with OpenGL, and other builds play the game better with DirectX 9, so on and so forth. Adjusting the graphics settings can ruin the game until you close it, change them, and open them again. Some emulators allow you to do this while the game is running, and others do not. This can really suck, especially if certain games run better on OpenGL and certain ones run better on DirectX. PCSX doesn't allow profiles, so you can just switch back and forth between games, but this is more intricate stuff that really doesn't need to be tampered with as much once you get everything running. So how do you get games? Well, if you have a physical copy of the game and a DVD reader, all you have to do is burn an ISO onto your computer. Put it in a file, open the emulator, and select the folder the ISO is in, and there you go. 
If you do not have the game and or do not have a DVD reader, you can easily find the ROMs online. Again, I suggest making a folder with all your ROMs in it for that specific emulator and if it allows, linking the emulator to that game file so it just pulls them from there. Also, if you have an Android phone, there are quite a few emulators on the App Store that you can use to play your old games as well. You can do this sometimes with Apple devices, but the emulators typically get removed unless you're jailbroken. There are immense amounts of in-depth tutorials about how to set up each and every emulator that exists. Most of them have everything you need right in the description. It can take time to learn, but trust me, once you do, it opens up a whole new world. Yeah, playing your old games again is fun, but modding them with better visuals, changing the resolution to 4K or the frame rate to 60fps, there's almost no limit. Depending on the emulator, that is. If you're going through tutorials and it's still proving tricky, don't give up. Don't let it discourage you. Just take their tutorials step by step. Ironically, the best way to learn how to emulate is to emulate.